Okay, let's go straight to football now. Of course, the Dream Team, okay, on the 23 national on team. No, I, can, I can call right them Dream four. Team 6 now. I can just call them Dream Team okay, 6 Okay, I would say Dreamy Team until mm. they get to win the Olympics uh, trophy uh, title next year, if they can do that. Okay, we'll just go straight to how that happened uh, yesterday where Samson Siasia boys had to, you know, manage to get to <laughs> get the Olympics wow, ticket. <laughs> They got it. That's what matters. 30 degrees, a little bit of humidity, a little bit of wind, and plenty of drama. Look at that lineup. Senegal up against Nigeria, two giants of the west coast of Africa. Itabo, the captain, going for a long-range effort. Oh, it's well struck, and it's gone straight into the hands of the goalkeeper. He absolutely nailed that. So that's what you want to do. First shot on goal as early as the third minute. That's what we like to see. Fine effort, but uh, the big man, wearing the big blue shirt, was uh, covering his goal. Like Messi being in the... Uh, in the Argentina side, who's still 23, I think, uh, back in 2008. That's a great through ball. Wonderful opportunity now. What can Senegal do here? The cross comes back, the driving header, downwards it goes. But it all came from that wonderful through ball. That was very slick indeed. Good play. Now on this uh, junior, good pass through, good opportunity for Nigeria, oh what a great challenge, now that should have been in the back of the net, let's have a look at that again, a delightful chip over the top, the one touch between the legs of the goalkeeper and Dai, let's have a look at that again, wow, there's the resulting free kick, Daniel, very slow, that's a penalty, he was so slow to come out. That was perseverance. And look at the way that he actually, I, how slow was that? Daniel needed to get out quicker. Keita misses it, Daniel comes to the rescue. Well, well, well. He's made up for that sloppy and slack attempt to get out of the... Uh... challenge oh there's been a mix up there's been a mix up that's handball it's going to be a goal surely penalty or oh, yeah it's a penalty they put it in the back of the net look at that handball he's been sent off it's all happened in the space of a moment incredible scenes yellow is not yellow it's red Tion goes off and they're down to 10 men he's absolutely livid the youngster he can't believe it all the penalty that's going to be a different cup of tea altogether look at the communication now that was comical that was just ridiculous communicate Etebo with the penalty can he find the back of the net yes he can Nigeria have taken the lead 1-0 for the dream team 11 it's the captain who comes to the rescue for the West Africans who take the lead over their host Senegal with 14 minutes remaining the Nigerian fans celebrate and who can blame them it all came from a there's no more for 10 minutes <laughs> that game was played yesterday 14 minutes not remaining <laughs> for the host country Senegal if you watch that match you will understand that with football, anything can happen. Senegal missed the penalty. Goalkeeper Seydou and um, Tione, they had, had, had he, he, he can't even explain it. He was <laughs> leaving. What did I do? <laughs> That's what it is when the god of soccer just says, this yeah. is the team I'm going to stay I, with. I was saying the tradition of Osimi actually, you know, make them it jittery. Brought some <laughs> you know, it brought kind some of, spark. okay, yeah. at least the guy who scored 10 goals mm. and under 17 mm. level, maybe he's in now to kind of bag in more goals and all that. But I don't know. But I, mean, I think we didn't do the mistake was really right. bad. But yeah. Tayo, do I care? And that's what Osimi <laughs> said. Is it true? Like, yeah. I don't care how yeah. they manage to qualify. Yeah. They're the, in the we're, final. We're going to the Olympics. And they're going to the Olympics. Mm. So yeah. congratulations that's what is important. Congratulations to the Dream Team. We're excited right here at Channels TV Sports Center. Let's go to Dakar, Senegal, where the team is standing by. We're being joined by the media officer of the national under-23 team, Timmy Ebikagbora. Timmy joins us now. Timmy, good morning and welcome to the show. Uh, good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, everybody. Mm. 
Timmy, ticket to the 2016 Olympics in the bag. What's going on with the team right there now? What's going on right now is that the boys are fanged out, the boys are exhausted. As I'm telling you right now, nobody, none of the players have come out of their rooms. They are still in their rooms, tired. But of course, they are satisfied, they are fulfilled, and they've given to Nigeria what they couldn't get four years ago to London. And of course, uh, for themselves, they've achieved, their names are going into records as the players who qualified Nigeria for the the mm. Before the final game, we spoke to the captain, Azubike Okechukwu, was confident that they would pick the tickets. Please say a special thanks to the team for keeping to their promise. But we're still hearing that the team, the players are still unhappy. What's going on? So what? We're still hearing that the team, they're happy. How are they getting ready for that game against Senegal? What's really going on with them? Against Algeria. Well, um... Well, uh, I, 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 for now, like I said, I, I, the people in their room have not seen them. Yesterday, we were happy. I don't know about anybody being sad for today. Uh, maybe later, I will know. But for now, I can say that the boys are in their rooms and they are quiet. They, they're not saying anything yet. Okay, for the game against Algeria, of course, we faced Algeria at the group stage and we're facing them again in the finals. How will the cr uh, coach approach this game? <laughs> for Kusatia, for now, what he said yesterday was that let him and his boys have all the qualifications for the finals. For the finals, the two challenges there, he has picked his Olympic ticket. I have to pick himself in now, he's an Olympic ticket of the entire but let him just rest and, and relax. By the time he rests, uh, they wake up this morning, think of what to do. But of course, the one thing is obvious the Algerians are no longer stranger to them. They're in good stage, so they know each other very well. Okay, to me, um, let's let's talk about um, that final game again against Algeria. Um, I'm excited again that the team did what they had to do, but are the players looking forward to that final game? Because I want to understand that now that they have the tickets in the bag to Rio, how are they going to approach that game? Do they see it as oh, whether or not we win it? We don't care. No, but they, we didn't come here. We didn't come here to come and to come and look at the at the beaches in, in Dakar. We've come here to come and to Nigeria proud, and they, they do Nigeria proud two things: win the Olympics and win the win the first Africa on the three day Champions Cup. And of course, the next target now is to go and, and leave that trophy. And that's what the boys are doing. Yesterday, if you had seen after that super game when Tepo uh, was losing a penalty, it was like it was a soft face. He couldn't watch the penalty, he had to kneel down and back the, back the, back the, the, the pitch. That tells you how tense he uh, was. So the team is happy right now. But now, the back is going to leave the trophy. All right. Okay. Thank well. you. Thank you so much, Timmy Abika. We're um, Media Officer National on the 23 team. And then congratulations again and send our love to the team back there in Senegal. You're welcome. Thank okay, you. that's it. Wasn't just well, it wasn't next. only Azubike that couldn't watch the penalty. I also took my face away, and I kept on saying, "Why can't the ref just let that go stand?" <laughs> because <laughs> you know what, you know what, to, to touch your BP because it was already tensed. Yes. Okay, um, I, I, I watched it because I knew Etebo was going to score. You knew Etebo was going to score. Yeah, because he scored two goals already. Of course, I know he. You wouldn't know when he when he was when I, he would I, lose I, it. I, I just assumed that he was going to score. Well, it was a good but penalty. I was I'm afraid mm. for the you know, Senegalese, you know, equal, equalizing. Yeah. That was where my fear was. And they also I was just had a chance to equalize. They had a chance. Without Blair Header. Header. And yeah, then you the start wondering in the 90th yeah. minute, yes. why are we not doing the man to man marking? Yeah. I think God just wants us yeah, to do Yeah, I listened okay. to the coach um, today, as in Siasia, and he said, he says that there was an invisible man, you know, that was actually behind the team okay. and okay. was trying to refer to God. And that's the man upstairs. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, Duro Ikazobe joins us now of this the newspaper. We'll be talking more on this on the 23 team and, of course, how they were able to get that ticket. Good morning, Duro. Mm. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning, Duro. Pleasure. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's been a while, Duro. You've not been... <laughs> Stopping by to talk sports, but it's good to have you around. Thank you. You you were trying to say something about weightlifting in Nigeria, particularly um, on what um, Tony to Adesami to told us. Uh, first, I'd like to say um, the guy was just being economical with his truth, which mm. is very typical of Nigerian athletes. Mm. They had issues. They almost missed going to the U.S. for the championship. Mm. Why? 
funding. Because of funding, which of course has been the issue we've been having with Nigerian sport over the years. The guests were in camp. Like she told you, they didn't train for more than three weeks because of uncertainty. They were not too sure. Initially, we had about six of the weightlifters that were going to travel. Later, it was called down to four, and eventually only two made the trip. What are we talking about? The yeah. summer games are barely six months away. Others five. Other countries they have, a team already. They want to have their the team program. ready. Mm -hmm. They've been training in the last four years, immediately after the London Olympics. And here we are, Nigeria, talking about funding to attend competition, not even to prepare the team. God. For me, <sighs> until we're able to get this thing right, yeah. that you don't wait till the last minute for you to look for the fund you need, we may not get out of the wood. Hmm. Okay. Why problem of funding? We have, you rem Austin, you remember the uh, National uh, Lottery uh, uh, Sports Fund? Yes. The one we have uh, 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 engineer Abu Gume yes. as the executive secretary. Yes. That body has well over six billion. My goodness. And it's actually meant for sports. What's going on? Why can't we find a way of getting part of this money? Let's just get our athletes ready in for an Olympic year. You yeah, prepare one. Not two all years sport has started it, a program is, for is preparation. The money, is the money, sitting, is the money sitting with them. The money is there and, and is existing. Of course, it? but well, going by the regulation of of of, uh, of of the body, it's only the president that can, that can approve okay. the funding. I heard at the point there were some moves made to uh, former president, good luck, Jonathan. Mm. Okay. Nothing came out of it. Here we are again. We're planning to go to Rio. You remember what happened in London? <laughs> London 2012. So we came, came back empty-handed. No lessons. We didn't now we're to... going to Brazil. No, immediately after we came back from London, we said, no, it will never happen again in Nigeria. Never again. <laughs> now we, we are four years after. We're we getting ready to go to Brazil, go to Rio. Even looking worse. Nothing, <laughs> nothing is happening. On nothing on ground. 